Okay, boys. What's up? Sorry for that little uh, interruption there on the last stream. <laughs> We're back again. We're back again. Don't worry. Okay. Literally looked outside the window and had the internet service provider working on the fucking telephone pole. Okay. <laughs> So that's what cut the stream out there. That's why it just ended for no reason at all. I apologize for that. That was definitely not my fault at all. They were literally working on the damn power line there. So I apologize, but we should be cooking now. We should be working now. Yeah, God's testing me today, boys, but that's all good because I want this shit forever, man, ever, man. Right when I'm trying to go test some of these different things with my streaming stuff, the damn internet providers outside cutting cables and redoing shit. <laughs> oh, man, you got to love it. Uh, when it rains, it pours, boys. When it rains, it pours. Hopefully, this will pan out good here, though. That's the thing about live streaming. If that internet connection cuts off even for a split micro .2 seconds... It's going to cut the stream off. Like, you, you literally just can't do anything about it. Let's just say your standard internet service provider is not set up for live streaming. <laughs> At all. But, sometimes that's all you got. Sometimes that's the only choice. I appreciate you boys tuning into the stream. Sorry for all the stupid shit I've had going on with these streams. All I can do is keep on it, dog. Keep trying. That's all I can do. We'll eventually get it. We'll eventually get it rocking. Didn't even make it to an hour in the last stream there to even test out if I was fixed that freeze issue, but we'll try to get there with this stream. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you boys tuning back in, though. This is on Xbox 360, right here, big dog. I see you in chat, I see you in chat. Xbox 360 is basically the way to play Reflex, like, period. Damn, I gotta get more speed out of that. Yeah, the people that don't think that Reflex is the goat of arcade motocross games, like, I don't even want to have a discussion with you. I don't even want to talk to you. Like, don't at me. Don't. It, it's not a debate. It's not a. If you genuinely don't believe that Reflex is the GOAT arcade motocross game, like, literally, it, it would be pointless for me to even, like, talk to you. <laughs> I mean, actually pointless. Oh, man. But yeah, definitely let me know uh, if the stream looks good, sounds good, and keep me up to date throughout the stream here. Hopefully we don't have any more hiccups from the service provider. <laughs> oh man, if it's not one problem, it's it's ten different problems. Oh, you gotta love it. Oof! Alright, let me focus on my gameplay here a little bit. I gotta I need to move my mic over just a little bit. There we go, Spancy boy. Yeah, some of those people that think those milestone games actually have a good physics system or they feel good or whatever. Whoo! <laughs> boy, oh boy. First of all, half of them are just trolling. If you see that on, on a YouTube comment, half of them are trolling like no doubt about it. Oh shit. The other half of them are literal four-year-old kids that don't know any different. That's, that's the only possible way you could think those milestone games feel more realistic than Reflex. Like, fucking period. That's the only way. What's up, what's up, boys in chat? I see you. We're trying to get a little deformation going. What's up, TKO Smuggy? What's up, big dog? Spency boy trying to make it work out here again. Sorry if I'm like off the track 10 times. I'm trying to look at chat here. I'll let some of these boys get in front of me so I can catch somebody here. I do have the, uh, the HUD turned off, but I think I'm in like second or third place right here. Unless these are lappers. I don't think they are, though. 
That's the Mac Daddy Fatty line for that. Then you got another Mac Daddy Fatty line right there. It's like a quad, quad, quad to a quad. <laughs> it actually takes thinking in reflex. That's what makes it different than those milestone games. The milestone games, you don't even have to think when you're playing the game. You just go around the track and you're just, yep, that's it. Like it's not, it's not, there's no thought has to go into it at all. I'm really having to keep my eyes off of the gameplay looking at chat here. Just make sure we don't have any more freezes or any dumb shit. So I apologize if my gameplay looks a little sketch balls. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell are these boys going all the way outside for? That rut literally like carried me all the way out. <laughs> Holy crap. And this little section right here is pretty cool too because you can go... Ah, I kind of missed it right there. That deformed rut starting to get pretty solid there. Yeah, we got them on all time. We're going to run max laps here. Shh, I, okay. Okay. All right, big dog. <laughs> you got to love the reflex. Dude, they are so savage. The AI in this game are so savage. It's insane. They will take you out so quick. He'll squat on that real shit before you can say, Bob's your uncle. It's another level, dude. Let me tell you. That's kind of fun though. Like I love AI like this that'll actually race you like your like your stepbrother. You know what I mean? They will take you out. They don't care if you're racing clean. They're gonna take your ass out. I like that. I really like that. Oh, tough blocks. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I love me some some aggressive AI. You know what I mean? That'll actually affect. Let me hit the pause button real quick and look at chat. Hey, Spencer, join us for a championship race on Reflex. I'll probably pass on that one, big dog. Oh, shit. Even though that would be pretty fun to, like, kind of get into more competitive racing on Reflex, it's just, like, not my scene, you know? Once you kind of do that shit on MX Sim, it just kind of, ah, I don't know. Like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't mean anything to me, I guess, to go do some kind of pro race thing on Reflex. It really just, like, it would be a little fun little experience and all that, but it, like, just wouldn't really be worth it for me. Because then I would have to take it too seriously, you know? Then I'd have to get in there and try to find all the little fucking hot cut lines, and I don't know. It, t it takes a lot of the fun out of these games when you start taking them too seriously. You start getting too into that pro race scene of any of these games. It can definitely take a lot of the fun out of it. I still really love to just play Reflex for fun, dude. You know? I don't... I mean, I try to be real careful and not even get into, like, any kind of organized racing or anything on anything other than MX Simulator. I try to be real careful of that because... The second I start doing that, then I try to get as fast as I can in whatever that game is. Then all the fun gets drained out pretty much instantly. So I have to be really uh, careful of that, really aware of that, you know. Gotta love that deformation, dog. Better than all these fucking modern motocross games. And this game came out in 2009. That was back in the Modern Warfare 2 era, okay? So just to kind of put it into perspective here... It is pretty mind-baffling when you realize what they did with Reflex. My hat is literally coming off the back of my head right now. <laughs> Spitzy boy going real fast. <laughs> oh, man. When did you first ever get into Reflex? Uh, would have been right around the time it first came out. That was, that was right when I really started getting into real-life racing. Uh... And I got Reflex. Dude, I... Oh, my God. The amount that I played Reflex on the 360, like, I don't even want to talk about it. It's really sad. Like, I, I literally just shot, like, like three years of, of fucking life. Three years of life was put into this game. Let me, let me just say that. I mean, like, played this game. If I wasn't riding in real life, I was playing Reflex. That's what I did from, like, 2009 all the way to 2015, basically. That's pretty much what, what my life consisted of. Going and riding in real life, and if I wasn't doing that, I was playing Reflex. 
Then, MA then I started getting into MX Simulator right there at like end of 14, 15, right? Then it kind of was like, all right, now we got to play this super serious ass thing. So I, di I didn't play Reflex as much then. But like if I wouldn't have got into MX Simulator, I probably would have got all into that like Reflex Pro Race PC scene and shit. But <sighs> MX Simulator kind of changed my life there once I got into that. So kind of changed my perspective on every other dirt bike game that I was playing at the time, you know. And it'll do that. It'll do that really quickly. Yeah, Spencey boy. Gotta be careful right there. <laughs> Man, look at the rut on this outside these boys have made. Holy crap, they're going far out. I mean, they're going way out. Holy crap. All right, let me look at chat here real quick. Sorry. It's like the only way I can look at chat. Hit the pause button every once in a while. Yeah, Moto Mika, if you didn't watch the first start of this stream, I, when my last stream cut out, I looked outside. There was literally two trucks out there from my internet service provider literally on the damn power line like they they did something to it that cut it out it was nothing that i did at all it was 100 percent the internet service provider they they were doing something on the power line and it cut out the internet for a split second and that's that's what cut off that last stream so oh shit <coughs> So yeah, I apologize for that. What's your favorite SX and MX track on Reflex stock tracks only? Uh, well, you're probably looking at the favorite Supercross track here. Uh, motocross track? Damn, that's hard. I don't, I don't know. Whew, I don't know, dude. I don't even know. Can I even pick one? I don't even know. Damn, like... Obviously, I, I can say which ones are not my favorite on the motocross shit. I can say that for sure. That very first one, that like really easy motocross track, that's not really my fave. Um, let's see. My, my favorites would be like Sandwick, Pine Top, and Razorback. Those are pretty much my, my top three. And then from that point, I don't know if I can even, like, narrow it down, you know? What's up, 45? Good to see you again. Sorry for that last stream cutting out. Literally had the damn internet service provider dudes on the power line outside. I, I didn't even realize that. I started the stream, and then 20 minutes into my stream, they're out there on the power line making all kinds of racket. I look out the window, like, oh, yeah, that's why my stream cut out. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, Razorback's pretty hard to beat because it's got that whole section where it's got a berm built up to literal Texas and back, and you can just hold it wide-ass open all the way around. That's really, really what takes Razorback to another level. Pine Top's cool because it's got super high speed, but it's also kind of... Pine Top almost gets into that fantasy level unrealistic big... But it's still cool to have one track like that in the game, you know. But it kind of, I don't know, Pine Top gets real smooth. But it's still a really fun track. And Sand Sandwick may have to be the fave for me. I, I don't know. Sandwick literally changed motocross gaming. Like Sandwick in combination with the terrain deformation of this game literally changed arcade motocross gaming forever. So... For that reason right there, that's probably why I'm going to have to put Sandwick up to, to another stratosphere than any other track. Just because of the way the terrain deformation developed on it in this game in particular. Can you quad this? Holy shit. There's a fun little... Hey, if any boys are wondering why Reflex is the GOAT, it's shit like that right there. I've played this game for like 10 years straight and I've, I swear to God I've never hit that line. I've never hit that line before. I've put 8,000 hours plus into this game, and I swear to God, I've never hit that. I've never jumped that many jumps over right there in that one section. <laughs> Boy, Reflex is the go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Reflex is, like, so far ahead. Oh, man. It literally makes these other arcade motocross games look so stupid. Oh. Oh, God. 
There you go, Spencey boy. There you go, Spencey boy. Damn, them ruts are getting... They're getting somewhere now, boys. All right, let me take a look at chat again here. 21 dudes in the... 21, 21 dudes in the chat. <coughs> uh, dude asks, Why do you think Milestone won't reach out to you? You have just as many or more followers as the other dudes. Uh, well, first of all, they won't reach out to me because I'm, 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 I am the truth. If, if you haven't realized that, in this motocross gaming reviewing world, bitch, I am the truth. Period. And Milestone can't handle that. So that's why they don't hit me up. <laughs> that's literally why they don't hit me up. Because I, I am way too honest about this shit. I'm way too real for Milestone to ever hit me up about anything. Period. So that's really all there is to that. Now, I gotta give MX versus ATV big props, because they did give me some early uh, shit with uh, All Out, right? If you guys remember that last year, I reviewed that I was the first one that had access to the Loretta Lynn replica track on All Out. And uh, I hit up the dude and I was like, hey, listen, I'm going to be honest about this shit. I ain't sugarcoating it. I don't care if you gave it to me earlier or whatever. I'm going to be as real as I've always been about it. And he was like, hell yeah, dog. Like, you can rip it apart. Like, whatever you got to do, you know. That tells you the kind of difference in the company of MX versus ATV and Milestone. Milestone won't even reach out to me, period. And then MX versus ATV will literally tell me, you can say whatever you want about this. Okay? So, you know, people think I'm like an MX versus ATV fanboy. No, it's more of how the companies actually are. That's what makes me like MX versus ATV more than Milestone. It's literally from the exact proof of how the company is and, and the way they've treated me. That's that plays a big element into it. But yeah, a lot of people may not even know about that, but that's the honest shit to honest truth right there. <clears throat> like literally the uh the community manager of MX versus ATV, that's the one that told me say whatever you want to say about the game. That takes some big balls, dude. Big balls. That's so. That was so badass when he said that. I was like, oh man, this company's got it going on. They got it going on, man. But yeah, I don't even give a shit about Milestone in the sense of like them not giving me stuff early. Boy, you think I give a shit? I think it's funny more than anything. <laughs> I don't care about it at all. <coughs> 420 Blaze. <coughs> okay. Oh shit. Sorry, guys. My gameplay is going to look crazy right now because I'm like constantly looking at chat, making sure the stream's going good here. I'm too much truth for this for this entire game MX gaming world. I'm way too much truth. Way, way, way too much. I'm the definition of brutally honest exactly when it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, Milestone's gonna keep on doing Milestone, aren't they? That's really cute. Dude, we need to do a live stream when MXGP 2021 comes out. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna do a live stream on it. Oh, boys. It's gonna be a good old time. Oh, shit. We're actually getting up to lappers here now. So that's cool. What's up, MLG? What's up, dog? See if I can still hit this quad without... Damn, that's tough to... Get it, Spincy boy! Yeah, there you go, dog. It's kind of tough to hit that without hitting that big rhythm before. Dude, I could literally play Reflex. If you sat me down on an island and told me to pick one game, one arcade motocross... Holy, look how far I'm jumping into that. Shit! This Ricky Carmichael setup, dude, is the setup, dog. Holy. When you talk about, like, acceleration compared to top speed, this Ricky Carmichael bike in this game is, is literally perfect. 
Like, set your bike up like this, dude. <clears throat> I think for the longest time, I had way too much top speed. Not enough... Uh, well, I had way too much acceleration. Not enough top speed on my bikes on uh, Reflex. That was something... I wasn't getting, like, the full range of, of the bike, you know? But I'm telling you, this Carmichael setup, dog, you will jump to another dimension and back with this. Boys, I appreciate you tuning in to this stream. Holy shit, looked at chat for a minute. That tough blog was like, come here, Spencer. <laughs> Let me give you a kiss. Let me pause this real quick. Bring the tea, bring the tea. Oh, we're going to have a fucking, we're going to have a keg full of tea, dog. Keg full of tea. That reminds me. Yeah, I got to get the tea right here. Hang on. Mm-hmm. Ah, goddamn. Mm-hmm. Alrighty then, boy. Yeah. Milestone needs to go to Milestone and take take a few notes. <laughs> uh, we got a cutie in chat here. Yeah, we'll put an end to that real quick. I'll squat on that real shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's put a bunch of fire emojis and trick him into thinking that we're actually a fan, but we're spamming his chat. <laughs> oh, you gotta love him. Okay. We got that we got that settled really quickly. Alright. Oh shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Literally just pulled like a damn Villapoto canard right there. Okay. Man, this track is getting muffed up, boy. Ho! <coughs> just when you thought you learned reflex, you need to get on a track, like one of these supercross tracks like this, get on there on all time and run maximum laps. And it's like an entirely different game. <laughs> it's literally a whole different game, dude. That's what that's what makes Reflex so badass. Ooh, I can jump to that too. Oh shit. This Carmichael setup, dude, is the way to go. Holy. Maybe it's because of the deformation. Yeah, Smitty boy. Okay, we got like two giant ass rhythms right here that I've never really hit before. We're gonna try to do it here. 31 dudes in the chat. What's up, boys? I appreciate you tuning in. We're back at it again. Sorry for the delay on the streams. Oh. Okay. Let's try to get this going here. Boy, you get going scary fast with this Carmichael setup. With that top speed on it. Oh, man. I mean, I'm literally like out of control right now. Straight up. I'm going too fast for the track, dog. Like, holy crap. Okay, Spencey boy, just keep her under control. Keep her under control. Whoa. All these ruts making me sketched out here, boys. All right. Let's nail this big rhythm. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's nail this. Shit. Yeah, I got it. I got it. All right, we got a shitload of lappers. It's going to be tricky right here. Fuck. Ooh. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to try that on the next lap. That guy kind of wrecked us there. Going to have to try it on the next lap. But this right here. I uh, can't do it. Too many lappers. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, man. Good God Almighty, Spencey boy. Calm down a little bit. I'm out here racing for the, the Reflex 2021 championship. Don't worry. Don't you worry about a thing. Whoa, Spence. God dang, boy. I'm telling you right now, if you've not rode with this Ricky Carmichael bike in this game in a while, you need to do that. Because I swear to God, you're going to be able to hit stuff bigger than you do on your custom bike in the game. It is the perfect setup. Speed to acceleration. 
literally perfection. And I don't know if it would be able to be applied to the other bikes in the game that may be just a, just a Suzuki only fucking Takashi only uh, thing, you know? Like if you have that exact same setup on a Shima, I don't, I don't know if it's going to give you the same effect. Damn, that's getting hard to hit that big line. All right, let's see where we're at here. Holy. Okay. Focus here a little bit. So I got to hit the smaller triple in, then the bigger, like to there. You know what I mean? Then do a single out. That's going to be big boy. That's going to be big daddy right there. Look at this though. Oh my God, you can almost jump all those jumps right there. Holy crap. The, dude, this setup is so legit. <coughs> All right, I'll let some of these boys catch back up here. Uh, Torquit said it'd be nice if more people played public lobbies on Steam while the servers still work. I like the Nordic Challenge lobbies. Nice mix of SX, MX, and Omnicross. Yeah. So... Yeah, they really need to come out with some sort of, uh, like, Reflex Remastered, you know? They, they really do need something like that for these games. No doubt about it, Doug. I have no idea what lap we're on, but we're, we're pretty deep in these laps right here. Track is completely different than the, the stock version of it. Totally different. Like, not, like, such a different track that you could literally consider it a completely different track. That's why Reflex was so kick-ass, because it's like you had all of the stock tracks, but it was, like, two tracks in every track. Because if you rode on it with max laps and terrain deformation, it turned it into an entirely different track. So it's literally like you had two tracks on every track. However much track content you think that there is in Reflex... Times that by like two or three, and that's actually the track content of Reflex with how good the terrain deformation was. What the hell is that tough block doing? All right, let's see what we can do here. Man, you can carry some stupid speed around that. Oh, man. But I lost a little bit of momentum there. Alright, let's go to a different track. I have no idea what lap was on there, but... <coughs> Nationals! So this is the setup here for Ricky. Showing that I have an excellent connection to the stream here, so it looks like we're doing pretty good. Just reminding you guys, any super chats I will read off in the video, and uh, obviously any memberships or anything like that, I will read that off as well. Okay. But yeah, you can see it's got two more on top speed than it has on acceleration, which typically you, w you just wouldn't set a bike up like that for Supercross, you know? You typically wouldn't even think to do that. Uh, for for Supercross, you know, you would think you would want a little more acceleration versus, you know, a little more top speed, but that's actually not how it works because um, the more, uh, like, Reflex is based entirely off of momentum. It's based off of momentum swings, and if you don't have a high enough top speed in this game, the bike literally can't even carry the momentum required. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you have to have it or you're just limiting the bike. You know, you got to have a certain amount of top speed even on a supercross track or you're just limiting the bike, period. <clears throat> Boys, I appreciate you tuning in this stream. We, it's been a hell of a year. We've been having to jump over like 300 different hurdles this year, but it's been a little bit of that, you know, uh, let me let me think of it in my head here. It's been a little bit like uh, 
What am I trying to say? Let me think. God dang, this is hard to talk when you take off on a, <laughs> on a start on Reflex. All the AI is going insane out here. Holy God dang, boy. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> um, it's like I had to do that like two steps back, three steps forward, you know? Had to go backwards to go forwards. It's really hard to explain that, but that's how this last year has been for me. But we'll get it cooking, boys. We got a lot of things coming for 2022, boys. We're going to be doing a shitload more live streaming, face cams, other games. Got a lot of stuff like that coming in 2022, my dudes. And just to give you a little... Uh, just to... You can jump so far right there. Holy shit. So, yeah. So that's the... Working. Oh, stream came back on. What the fuck? It saved itself this time, boys. <laughs> oh, this is something else. This is something else here. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, I think what's happening today is my internet service provider. That's what, when you start getting this where it disconnects and connects back, that's, that's typically your internet service provider. So, they seem to be having some hiccups today. I apologize for that. But, uh, there is literally nothing I can do about that. Now, as far as the stream freezing an hour into it, that's not the internet service provider. That's something else entirely. But, uh, whatever the hell this is going on is... Oh, Spency Big Daddy. <laughs> Yeah, it's, there's something going on with the internet connection where it's cutting out for just like a split second and then coming back on. I don't know why it's even doing that in the first place, but good old internet service provider, bro. Got us a little super chat here from Dat Guy. $5. Da baby, let's go. <laughs> That's what he says. Oh man, I'll say it, dog. I'll say it. Uh, okay, so that was his message there. I appreciate that five dollars, big dog. First donation of the stream. I appreciate you, dude. Shit, looking at chat. Let's go ahead and restart this race after all that action. I appreciate that super chat, dog. All right. <clears throat> but yeah. Sorry if the stream cuts out a little bit here. I have no idea what is going on with that, but... it. Luckily, this one came back on before it totally just killed the stream, so... We'll try to rock and roll with it here. But I actually noticed that issue a little bit when I was uploading videos for the past two days. It was taking like 10 times longer to upload the video the past two days than it was previous. So there's definitely been some fishy shit going on with my internet service provider these past couple days. Like I say, they were just working on the... the uh, the telephone pole outside here, so they're they're trying to fix it at least. I bet you what happened is they fixed something here on the telephone pole, then they went back to their headquarters and probably hit a button there, and then it reset it again. You know, probably what they did with that. So we should be good at this point. Oh, Spency boy, stay on the track. I feel like there's a bigger... You can jump this way the hell down the hill. Look at that shit. Holy. 
This, you can jump way the hell down the hill too. Boys, I appreciate you sticking with me through all these stupid-ass stream issues I've been having. I promise you, eventually it will all get ironed out. Eventually we will get it all going where I won't have any hiccups like this. I genuinely do think I have fixed the, the uh, freezing after an hour shit here. I genuinely do think I have fixed that. We'll let the boys pass this here real quick. Stream connection, excellent, it says here. So, should be good. <coughs> What's my favorite IRL bike? Uh, YZ125, and it's not even close. <laughs> it's not even close. Oh, man. Okay, we let these boys pass us. We'll try to get back up here to them. But yeah, if the stream does die out at some point here, I will just stream again tomorrow. <laughs> That's basically what I'm going to do until I get to all this shit ironed out. I'm just going to stream every day until I get it all ironed out. You can hit such a big line right there. Oh my God. You can literally land in the water from that jump. It is insane. Yeah, sorry boys, stream cut out for a split second there, but luckily it, it didn't kill the entire stream. Yeah, if it's not the stream freezing in an hour, then it's the damn internet service provider. <gasps> Ooh. They're, they're testing me today, boys. They're testing me. It's all good, though. I have a pretty relentless mentality on things like, fuck it, you know, knock me down 10 times, I'll get up 20. That's kind of my mentality on everything, so it is what it is. Shit. Yeah, I'm going to have to get up from that one. Holy nuts. But yeah, Razorback, you can hang that bike out, dog. Oh, Spencey boy. Eventually... <clears throat> eventually we will have a lot better of an internet service provider here so we'll be getting we'll have way more stable of a connection but that will be a little bit a little bit down the road but um there's good things to come without a doubt but typically this internet service provider doesn't have the problems that it's having today this is definitely a one-of-a-kind deal here so I, I figure they'll have that ironed out and won't have to worry about that there is a Mac Daddy quad line. You can hit it right up in here, too. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep doing this stream as long as it'll stay alive, boys. Going live to keep this shit alive, you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. Yeah, and it's even more difficult trying to be like a live streamer when you don't really know what everything is. Like, I have a decent idea of what everything is, but this is not like what I do, you know? So it makes every element of it a little bit more tricky for me than it would be like somebody like, you know, they grew up streaming. I, I was definitely more of a grew up doing YouTube videos more than it was streaming, but, but yeah. Yeah. There's so many more moving parts when it comes to live streaming. So it's everything has to kind of work together, you know. Get the fuck out my way, dog. Get your bike out of my way, dog. I'm hauling ass. Just keeping the gas wide, dude. There ain't nothing more fun, I tell you. Ain't nothing more fun than just holding that gas on on reflex and just like letting your mind go to a whole nother place. That is that is a certain thing in this gaming world that you just can't you can't even explain it. <laughs> you know, you really can't, dude. 
that holding it wide open, you're just fucking hitting every line you ever imagined hitting in the entire game. You're just going, dog. So much fun in this game. Oh. Look at the scrubbing, dude. Oh, man. Look at the scrubbing. I feel like that's kind of the easier line to hit right there. Not necessarily the biggest. Definitely the easiest, though. I'll see you boys in chat. Give me just a minute and I'll take a look at it. Oh, shit. Oh, I need a... Oh, dude, you could jump to that water. Oh, man. But, yeah. Basically, I'm to the point now where it's like I'm going to stream every single day. And just... This shit's going to get ironed out regardless. You know? Eventually, I will have all this ironed out streaming every single day. But that's my problem. I get a little discouraged whenever I do have issues with my stream. It's like, fuck. I don't want to try to stream again because then I may have that same issue again. So it kind of discourages me a little bit, but I just, I can't, I can't even think about it that way, you know? I just got to do it, and then if shit happens, shit happens, and then try to figure out why it happened, and then try to fix it, you know? It's all I can really do at this point. All right, let me pause this real quick. Take a look at chat. Moto go go. What's up, big dog? Yeah, gotta love those streaming issues. They're really fun. <coughs> they are really fun. Okay. Let me look and see if everything connection's good. Everything's good. Yep, connection's excellent. Tells me it's excellent. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, uh, that guy that, that uh, sent me a $5 super chat, I'm pretty sure my memberships are only like $4.99. So, you know, just, just reminding you of that. But again, I totally get it if you don't want to fucking become a member and all that. Totally get it. But that's really what allows me to do these live streams more is um, that's what pushes me to do them more whenever I get super chats and memberships and all that kind of stuff. That's really what pushes me into to being like, all right, I'm just going to do this. I don't care about anything else because, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't want to get into YouTube based strictly off of money because you're going to be really disappointed. There's been a lot of years of me doing YouTube making literal pennies, okay? So, you know, I've already been through all that shit of like, all right, I love this enough to keep doing it even when I'm not making very much money, okay? But we're to the point now where it's like, I got to try to get as much out of it as I can. So, like, if I can live stream and make this much versus making a video and make this much, then obviously I'm going to live stream over making a video. Does that make any sense? And plus, I like live streaming more than I like making videos, but it's just a little more complicated to live stream, right? Okay, let's get on a different track. You already know what we're about to hit right here. You already know, boys. Holy. It's about to be sand blasting, roosting all over the countryside. All right. Goat loading screen, by the way. <clears throat> No big deal, no big deal. We're going to blast this sand to another dimension right here. Yeah, and you got to love how when the stream will cut out for a split second, you know, it'll make my viewer count drop by like 80, 80 90% just because the stream cut out for a split second. It's like, God dang it. But it's all good. You got to roll with the punches with this live streaming YouTubing shit. 
If you don't learn how to roll with the punches, you're going to be in big trouble because it shit don't always happen how you think it's going to happen. It doesn't always work as smoothly as you think it should work. When you start getting into this computer internet crap, it, there's so many moving factors in it behind the scenes that like one day something could work completely fine and then you could not change a single thing and then the next day it could not work for shit. That's just how internet computer stuff is, dude. You know? It's kind of how it is, my man. Alright, let's hook this daddy way on out here. Way on out here. Oh, baby. But yeah, once I do actually get these streams working really good, I'm going to start doing some like four or five hour long streams, dog. We're going to start doing some big daddy streams. Uh, we're going to get the face cams going on the streams. We're going to get the whole caboodle going here, dogs. I really do want to get uh, the new Forza game. Check it out in a little live stream. It'll be kind of fun. Any of you guys got that new Forza game? Let me know in chat. My history with Forza is kind of like I played the OG original on the... Uh, holy shit, I'm hauling ass. I mean, whoa. Literally feel like Ricky Carmichael at Southwick. Um... Yeah, I played like the old school Forza games, but I haven't played any of the uh, the Horizon ones. That's kind of, for some reason, I just never really got into those. I, I don't know why, but haven't really played any of those. Definitely let me know in chat if any of you guys played that new one. Kind of want to get an idea if it's even worth buying, because I have no idea. All right, let me check my connection here real quick. Make sure we're still still chugging along. Yeah, it looks like it. Nope, playing on Xbox 360, big dog. Xbox 360 here. Because <clears throat> that's really the, what I call like the actual feeling of reflex is on the 360, so. The PC version of Reflex, it's so hard to even explain it because I think a lot of people, they, they played Reflex on the 360 or PS, what, PS2, I think it would have been back in the day, or PS3, actually. Yeah, I think it's PS3. Um, but... I feel like what, what has happened is people have, they've started playing the PC version of Reflex, right? And they've kind of gotten twisted into thinking that the PC version feeling is like how the 360 version felt back in the day. Like it's the same kind of game, you know? I think they've gotten a little tricked up there because... Once you go back and play the 360 version, I promise you, if like if you if you've only really been playing the PC version of this game for the past like five, six, seven years, then you go back and play the 360 version. Then you go back and play the PC version again. Right after that, you're gonna be like, holy shit, this game was entirely different on the Xbox 360 than it was the PC. It's just entirely different. Like everything about it is different. The feeling, the controller input, the reaction, the physics. I mean, it's just, it's really hard to even explain it. Even though it's the same exact game and it feels somewhat similar, it's really not the same game on every different platform. 
Yeah, imagine if you get those custom tracks on the Xbox version. Woo-wee! That would be next level. I really think they need to do that, uh, like, certainly with some of these modern consoles, like a PS5 and a Xbox uh, Series Z, AZ, fucking whatever we're at now. Um, they really need to get to the point where they've got it where you can kind of, there's some kind of like Steam integration into the console version of these games where it allows you to download stuff from the Steam Workshop onto your console just like you would on a PC, but you can't really use like the track editor on the console, but you can still download stuff off of the Steam Workshop. They really need to integrate that into some of these newer newer motocross games or like a reflex remastered or whatever the hell you know what i'm saying they really need to integrate something like that in spency boy scrubbing the shit out of the bike out here i love how reflex is like that perfect difficulty to where i can play the game and talk at the same time you know if it was any more difficult than this, it would be a challenge to try to look at Chad and play the game and talk all at the same time. It would certainly be a little tricky. When you're live streaming, you definitely have to learn how to kind of play the game without even looking at it. <laughs> you got to play the game off of looking at peripheral vision. It's pretty funny how that, how that is when you start live streaming. Oh, that rut. Yeah. All right, let me pause this, take a look at chat. I want to kind of do this every every so often here. Check my connection. Excellent connection. Okay. All right. Thank you, YouTube. Excellent connection. Appreciate you. Okay. Okay. What's up, Zach? What's up, big dog? Yeah, my plan for some of these future streams, I want to do some Reflex on PC custom track multiplayer streams really soon. And I also want to do some, uh, some like, some different kind of game streams, like some Forza Horizon new game stream. Maybe fuck around and go in there and see how terrible Call of Duty Vanguard is. That would be kind of interesting. Be kind of cool to do some stuff like that for streams. And then obviously doing like an MXGP 2021 stream when it first comes out. That would be interesting as hell doing that as well. I've never really done that before. Like covered a new game in a stream when it first comes out. So definitely something I want to try to try to do here in the future. Whoa, yeah. Kind of tricky right there, going around that rut. Whoa, Spence. Turn that damn bike over a little quicker. But yeah. I apologize for the technical difficulties in this stream and last the last like 10 streams that I've done. I, I really genuinely apologize for that. I promise you I'm doing everything I can to prevent that slash fix that slash make it better. I fucking promise you I'm doing everything I can. There's sometimes when, when you stream, there's things that are literally just out of your hands. Like straight up out of your hands. You just can't actually do anything about it, you know? Oh. You can get going pretty damn fast on this track. Especially when these ruts start getting where they kind of, the deformation gets high enough to start smoothing it back out a little bit. You can definitely get to hauling ass then. Boys, I appreciate you tuning in the stream. I appreciate Home Dog that sent the $5 super chat. That literally just made this stream like entirely worth it. <laughs> just just right there straight up. You basically have to get like at least two, three thousand views on a video to get like five dollars on it. At least at the at the smaller level. So 
But yeah, it's kind of weird how it works, how you make money off of YouTube videos. It's like the bigger and the bigger they get, the more and the more money they make. You know, it kind of starts to multiply. So, you know, if your videos are only getting like a thousand views, you're only going to make like a dollar off of it. But if your videos are getting like 10,000 views, you're going to make like $20 off of it. And if your videos are getting like 100,000 views, you're going to make like $500 off of that one video, right? So it kind of, it's like the, the bigger, the better, the, the bigger, the more views, the more money you make, it just multiplies and multiplies. So it really is a system of, it feeds the, it feeds the higher viewing videos way more than it does the, the lower viewing videos. So that's kind of where the, the streaming sort of out, outplays the, the videos, especially at the lower, lower stages of YouTube, because all it takes is one $5 super chat or like a couple members or whatever. And then you've already, you've already made more off of that small little stream than you would have a video, you know? But at the same time though, if you have a lot of videos on a channel, everything kind of stacks and you know, you're still making money off of the videos that you uploaded five years ago. So it kind of, Kind of, kind of all adds up a little bit if you do have a lot of video content out there. Boys, we're just ripping and snorting out here on Southwick, Sandwick, Southwick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 420 blaze. Okay. But yeah, the stream could definitely cut off again. So, you know, just be aware of that if that does happen. But as long as it doesn't totally kill my stream, I will continue it. Okay. That's the shitty part about it. Like if it cuts your, if your internet cuts off for a, for more than whatever that threshold is to where it'll still keep your stream going. If, if it cuts off anywhere, like more than 10, 15, 20 seconds before the, the connection comes back on, then it'll just totally end your stream. Like, like you completely ended it, you know? So, but that the last little cut out of the stream, it, it didn't it didn't cut it out long enough to end the stream. So we're still rocking and rolling here, boys. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, I think the stream's working pretty good now though. You can let me know in chat. Let me know if the video audio quality is looking pretty good. Everything should be working good now. We'll get these hiccups figured out, big dogs. We'll get it figured out. You got to be relentless in life. You know, you're going to you're going to be met by some adversity when you try to do things. You're going to be met by some serious ass, especially the more, the more crazy something you're trying to do, the more hurdles you're going to have, the more things you're going to have to try to figure out, you know, and it just comes down to, you got to be so relentless with it that it doesn't matter. You know, you could have any amount of adversity or whatever, and you're still going to push through it because you... Like, you got to have that nothing can stop you mentality when it comes to streaming and YouTube. Straight up. You're never going to make it in this shit if you don't have that. If you don't love it enough to where it's like, like, I don't know. Like, I die for this shit. That's how much I, I care about this, you know? And it almost takes getting to that point, dog. It may sound crazy, but I'm telling you. Man alive at the at the adversity you will you will find on YouTube and live streaming. It's a lot of lot of hard times, you know, figuring out all the damn microphone settings and recording settings and internet settings and you, you literally basically have to become an internet like technician to to fully understand how this shit works with live streaming. It's pretty insane, dog. Dude said, no game audio for me. Yeah, because I have it turned off. I was talking about audio as far as commentary and then video quality. That's what I was talking about here. 
But yeah, look at the ruts, dog. Oh, man. I appreciate you boys tuning in the stream. Look at that rut. Holy. If I could hit it, that would be cool. You gotta love when you get to the level where it's like you learn how to control the bike grinding the fucking off-track billboard, the off-track barriers. You can literally learn how to start grinding the bike without crashing on those barriers. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny. Like even this fence up here, you can learn how to literally basically just grind the entire fence and stay on the bike. Pretty hilarious when you can do that in this game. But yeah, uh, my plan for 2022 is to get to the point where I can upload a video like early in the morning every day and then live stream in the evening every day. That That's kind of what I'm trying to work into here for 2022, my dude. So... That's the process you're seeing right now. <laughs> Trying to work into that here. Dude, this game is so much fun. That D formation's getting right at that point where you can really... What the hell? Is that my brother? What the fuck is it? Yo, we got a clone out here, boys. I did not even realize you could have two of the same uh, rider on a track. That's hilarious. <laughs> we're, we're teammates, boys. Don't worry. Just same gear, same rider, same number. Don't worry. Don't you worry about a thing. Oh, man. What's up, Ricky? Hey, my name's Ricky, too. That's cool. Oh, Spencey boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gets a little sketch when you get going wide open. Holy crap, this track. Getting tore up, bro. Straight tore up out here. This, this kind of track, though, with this kind of deformation, I can straight up play this for infinity amount of time. Like, I never get bored of this right here. This, this right here in particular, I never get bored of this. Like, this keeps me so engaged, I can literally sit here and play this for five hours straight without stopping. And I'm still having fun by the end of it. Wait, let me see what this comment here is. All right, let's go to a different track, boys. Okay, so RC Racer says, Spencer, what kind of track content do you think that MX vs. ATV Legends is going to have? Do you think it'll be similar to the AMA DLC that came out in All Out? Uh, I do. Well, I mean, obviously they're going to have some kind of... Uh, let's do a little free riding, boys. I gotta love these just absolutely epic, totally different biomed, amazing three different free ride tracks here. Gotta love it, Doug. Um, so yeah, they're they're definitely gonna have some form of replica AMA Lucas Oil Pro Motocross DLC for uh, Legends, like without a doubt. That's literally not even a question uh, because they basically showed that in the trailer. Um, so, like, um, the, it's going to have some of that for sure. No doubt. Okay. looks like we still have excellent connection to the stream. So everything seems to be looking good now, boys. Sorry for those little hiccups. Oh. Uh, I need to get a little bit better of a like computer setup. I need another monitor over here where I can look at chat versus looking at everything on my phone. Because everything kind of uh, 
when you try to look at a video on a phone, it'll it'll look like it's trying to lag and shit. Or I mean, a, a stream on a phone. It, you know, it's kind of hard to even do that. Boys, I really appreciate you tuning in to the stream. We're going to get the memberships, the dude ski memberships and everything popping back off. Now that I've got a proper place to do everything again, um, I'll be getting back in there on my Discord, getting in there, uh, getting all the dude skis in chat, getting in there playing some games. So we're just slowly working back into it. Slowly getting back into it. Boy, this is... This right here is like the epitome of why those milestone game free ride tracks suck ass. This, this is, look at this. This is what you call actual fun factor on a free ride track. That's what this is. All you boys getting so caught up in that bullshit little enduro tree. <laughs> All that little enduro tight little obstacles everywhere. Little enduro areas and you can't even hit one single big jump on the entire compound <clears throat> MXGP 2020. That, dog, that is not a free ride tr compound. That's like a, I don't even know what that is uh, in that game. I have no idea. Let's see if I can land this. Oh, daddies. Oh, daddies. Oh, daddies. Hell yeah, Doug. Anytime I see my, my uh, active viewer count drop, I have to look at my connection, make sure I'm still still running good here. Okay. Looks like everything seems to be going okay now. Going okay now. Got to thank the streaming gods for that one. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it's all good if they want to put some like enduro sections on a free ride track. Technically, you could consider this this having some enduro sections to it. But um you don't want to try to make the entire track so tight and small and enduro everywhere, you know, to the point to where it kind of takes away from the free riding element of it. You got to be pretty careful with that, you know? Boy, I can play Reflex, dude. I can play this game on any track, any kind of track, any kind of bike, anything. And it's still fun. It's straight up still fun. <laughs> that, that That's how you know you... You got it going on, dog. That is definitely how you know you got it going on. No, they definitely need to widen out the, the MXGP game tracks. 100%. They definitely need to do that. And let me tell you why. Because... They're making an arcade motocross game, okay? So, which means that it's not real life. You're not trying to go in there and make one-to-one -one replica tracks. That's not the point of an arcade motocross game. The point of an arcade motocross game is to get the most fun factor out of the game that you can possibly get, but you don't want to go too far with that whipping, completely backwards, seven backflips over a jump, you know, 500 foot wide track there still has to be some element of realism in a arcade motocross game but you don't want it you don't want to make it too real to where you start killing your fun factor potential like if they would have come in here and made all of these reflex stock tracks as narrow as those MXGP, uh, you know, newer MXGP game tracks if they would have made these stock tracks on reflex as narrow as that they wouldn't have been as good as they were. If they would have made the the stock the uh, stock track MX and Supercross tracks, god damn, I'm going to need to get some tea, Spency boy out here ranting. <coughs> if they would have made the, the stock tracks on Reflex jumps 
as small scaling as they are in the newer MXGP games, they wouldn't have been as fun. They wouldn't have had the same the same charm and character to them. <clears throat> it would have, like, straight up. I think a lot of people nowadays, they're getting real confused with... And I had somebody comment something on one of my videos. It, it kind of explained this to me. It's like... See, people, some people look at reflex as being like, oh my god, how is that realistic to hit a quad, quad, quad jump on a supercross track? Or how is that realistic to, you know, be able to backflip on a supercross triple? Well, the whole thing is, is reflex is not a simulator. <laughs> you know, there's a difference between making a good arcade game a realistic arcade game, that's different than trying to make a arcade sim hybrid or a full-blown simulator. A lot of people get real tricked up in that, oh, about to black out here, boys. Holy shit. Um, a lot of people get real confused, like, whenever I say stuff like, you know, Reflex is as realistic as you can make an arcade motocross game. What I mean by that is... If you try to make it, if you try to make a game any more realistic than Reflex, like you start trying to make the tracks more narrow, the jumps smaller, you know, one to one scaling. If you start trying to do that, then it'll it'll just take away from the arcade feeling of it, right? It'll take away from the arcade fun factor. Then you start getting into more of that simulator esque game design, which is not how an arcade motocross game is. Period. It's just not. People are kind of conflicting those two different worlds together. You know, like, they're trying to, especially with those milestone games, they're trying to conflict, like, a arcade game fun factor and then the realism of a simulator. They're getting very confused at the difference between those two things, you know? Like, yeah, obviously, there's a lot of elements to Reflex that, you know is a little more extreme than you're going to be able to literally do in real life unless you're actually James Stewart in real life, obviously. But that's what an arcade motocross game is. You know, you got to remember the kind of game that you're talking about. That's really what it comes down to, you know. But Milestone has this weird little thing going on where it's like they have super extreme graphics, right? And then they have like narrow tracks, small one-to-one track scaling, but the physics are nothing like a simulator. They are nothing like a, like a hardcore, you know, the kind of game that you would want to have a one-to-one -one scaling track design in. The whole problem is the physics don't match up to that. So it's kind of like, what the hell's the point in having one-to-one -one track scaling if your physics are not even to the level of reflex? It don't make any sense, dog. It don't make any sense. Even in a simulator, it's it's very very risky making one to one scaling tracks because you just you limit so much of the potential fun factor and replayability and line option and and air time and all that shit. Of course, you don't want to get too much of that because then you start getting into that MX versus ATV all out seven backflips on a two foot jump. You know, it kind of gets out of hand. You can definitely make an arcade motocross game too arcadey. You know, you can definitely do that. But Reflex is not that. It's the perfect balance between arcade feeling and realism. That's what Reflex is. Period. Moto Mika got reflex working. Hey, round of applause out here. Let's give a little clap for uh, Moto Mika. Oh, man. Took long enough. But I guess you could say that about me trying to figure out my live streams, too. So, <laughs> better be careful what I say. <laughs> <coughs> huh. All right. Let's get on a little, uh, let's see. A little Ricky. Man, I'm vibing with this Ricky right now, Doug. We're straight vibing out here with Ricky. Oh, my lamp. And then, like, for instance, let me get on this one track I was thinking of in my head here. Is it? Yeah, it's this one. Uh, let's put it on all time. Yeah, max laps.
Dude says, what do you think about MX versus ATV Supercross Encore physics? Uh, they're basically just like Reflex, but but way too restrictive. That's pretty much what, what MX versus ATV started to run into there. At like MX versus ATV Supercross and then Encore, it was... Well, let me say it more like this. It's like you took a lives physics and then made it way too restrictive. I don't even want to give it the credit of even being associated with Reflex because it's very far from that. But it's kind of like you took a lives physics and then just made it way more restrictive for no apparent reason at all. That's basically what MX vs. ADV Supercross and Encore is. Oh, man. But here's a good example right here of a little bit more of that, what you would call smaller scaling... Okay, as far as track width, all right. But the whole thing that makes that okay t in reflex on this track is because there's only a couple tracks that have this small of scaling, okay? You have a good variety of scaling, whereas in the MXGP games, everything is tight. Everything is too narrow. Everything is too small scaling. It's not like just a couple of tracks get a little more small scaling. Everything's too small, let me try to stay. I'm looking at chat here and trying to talk. Let me see if I can stay on the track. But the other thing is here is when you have this good of a physics system, okay, it, it makes it not as bad having smaller track scaling when you have this good of a physics system. That's the whole thing that's very hard to explain about reflex. When you get this good of physics Shit, it's almost like it don't even matter what kind of track design you have. It's going to be pretty damn good because you're still going to have the, the fun factor and the skill gap within the track. Now, does this track have as much fun factor and skill gap as like a Fort Dodge round two? No, it doesn't have. But nonetheless, that's okay because you still have a Fort Dodge round two in this, in this game. You still have a, you know... Uh, pine top and a bigger jump scaling style tracks in this game so it's okay because they didn't make the entire game around that like if reflex if every stock track in this game had this kind of narrowness to it and this kind of scaling reflex wouldn't have been the same game that it was so that should go to show you a little something right there you know it had good variation of track scaling. Had some that were a little bigger, a little more fantasy. Had some that were smaller, some that were kind of medium. Boy, this AI is savage out here. <laughs> Straight savage mode. I mean, they're bullying me out here, dog. <laughs> uh. That's all good, though. I love the AI and Reflex. I really do. It makes it fun. Makes it interesting. <coughs> Whoa, Spence. Yeah, this, this Ricky Carmichael setup bike right here may be a little too much top speed for this track. This track in particular. Once you get on the tightest Supercross tracks in the game, may be, may be a little overkill on the top speed here. Boys, we will be, we're going to be live streaming like a madman here coming up soon. So we'll get everything going again with the memberships. So uh, if you want to take a look at that, all you got to do is hit the join button on the front part of my page. And you'll see what you get with that. But now that I got everything cooking again on my channel, I can actually apply myself to that again and get everything going with that. I apologize to all the past members that fucking became a member and then I had issues with everything. But uh, I will make it up to you, big dog. I will make it up to you. There's a big-ass jump you can hit right here. Look at that. Woo-wee! Hot damn, Spency boy. Hot damn. Even on the smaller jump tracks, there's still some areas you can, you know, kind of separate yourself. I got to get out of this crowd of dudes here so I can actually ride the track. Oh, boys. You can definitely hit a bigger rhythm in there. Yikes. Yeah, we're going to have to try to hit that this next lap. But let me get around this dude real quick. That's a quad right... Shit. 
Got another guy right here. Mother... F yeah, once you get this much top speed on a bike, you got to be careful on a track that gets this tight or you'll kind of override the track a little bit. Oh my God, you can jump to there. Holy shit. I'm telling you, boys, this Ricky Carmichael bike in this game... It's next level, dude. It is next level. Like, if I was going to do any kind of pro racing in this game, fuck it. I'll straight up ride with the Ricky Carmichael in the game. Like, I don't even care, dude. That's what I would ride with in the game. Straight up. All right. Oh my gosh. That is, that's going to be tricky right there, hitting that quad in, I think it is, because you're going to have to carry that momentum around that really tight corner. I just don't know how feasible that, that really is going to be. Definitely possible, I just don't know how feasible to do it every lap. Boys, I appreciate you sticking around in the stream through all my issues I've been having here with the stream. You boys are the real ones. I just want to let you know. You boys are the real ones. I'm going to start doing some more uh, members-only videos as well. I think that would be a cool little addition, cool little something to give to the members. So, yeah, we will start that members-only videos, potentially members-only live streams. Obviously, I'm still going to continue all the same content that I do on my channel, but it would certainly be cool to uh, give back to the members, right? So we're going to... Everything's coming around to start doing all that shit for 2022. See the quad line right there? It's going to be tough. Dude asking chat, guys, what's your dream MX game? <clears throat> You're looking at it. I'll just drop the mic right there. Fuck it. Yeah, and then anything past this is really just, it goes into like Reflex 2, Reflex Remastered, Reflex this and that, <laughs> you know? Now, to be serious with you, though, uh, the dream game would be like a MX simulator physics system with like a like a milestone graphics system with a reflex terrain deformation system, okay? If you could imagine all those things kind of thrown together, that's about, oh shit, that's a big, big jump in there. That's about the, would be the perfection game. If I could, if I could think of it all in my head like that. But as far as just a straight up arcade motocross game, you're you're not going to beat Reflex. Period. Straight up period, it's not going to happen. Like I I don't care what anybody says about anything, it's not going to happen. <laughs> just like you know, just keeping it real out here, it ain't going to happen. Okay, connection still looks excellent, so stream's looking pretty good here now. I think my internet service provider finally got the kinks worked out for today anyways. Dude said wanted some more motocross, so we'll get on something here. Uh, I'll let you boys pick the track. Anything other than Razorback or Sandwick, because I already wrote on those. I'll take a look at chat. We'll ride on whatever track you boys want. Tea break, tea break. <clears throat> what motocross track you want, boys? Pick one.
Dude says, should do some supercross. <laughs> so when I go to do some supercross, they tell me do some motocross. When I go to do some motocross, they tell me do some supercross. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Oh, this stream's been going for an hour and a half. So I think I've fixed the hour freeze issue. Holy shit. <laughs> I think I've actually fixed it here, boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to get me a little bite of that little little nut bar over there. <laughs> we hungry, boy. We hungry. <clears throat> All righty then. Little pine top, little pine top. Hell yeah, brother. Boy, I love live streaming though. Oh, I, I love it. Like. I'm definitely way more of a live streamer than a YouTuber, without a doubt. There is so much more my person, like my actual real personality comes out in a stream than it does in a video. It's like not even the same person. It's crazy, bro. Let me just kiss my front fender real quick. No biggie. No big deal. Uh, oh, yep. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, oh, you gotta love the scrub physics to the old reflex, dog. Perfection scrub physics. Literally perfect. When I say perfection, I don't mean really good. I don't mean amazing. I mean fucking perfection. Do you hear me? Perfection. You can't get it any better. That's how good the scrub physics were on Reflex. You literally can't get it any better in an arcade motocross game. Period. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to discuss it. I don't care what your opinion is on it. It is what it is. <laughs> like, straight up. Whoa, Spence. But yeah, just to give you a little history lesson here, uh, the past 10 streams that I've done on YouTube have all frozen right around that like hour mark into the stream. And this stream, we're at like an hour and a half. But it did cut off for a split second there towards the start of the stream. So we'll see what happens here. But the reason why it cut off, though, was internet service provider. That wasn't, that had nothing to do with the streams freezing uh, before. But I think I fixed the freeze issue because I did go in there and change a big setting in my encoder. Okay. So it seems as if we've completely ironed that out here. Which is big gains, boys. Big gains. That means you're going to be seeing a shitload more live streams from me. Coming up really soon. Whoa, Spence. I get to looking at the chat and I'm like, look back at the screen. I'm wide ass open in the fence. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'll be getting that new MXGP game strictly just to cover it on YouTube. That is literally the only reason I'm buying it. I didn't even buy last year's Call of Duty. Okay. So, you know, I see a lot of people, you know, leaving comments and shit like, well, Spencer, you're still buying the new MXGP game, though, bro. <laughs> Must mean you like it. No. 
you do realize I make money off of YouTube from covering these new motocross games. You do realize that, right? So all I'm doing is losing money if I don't cover the next MXGP game. No matter how, how bad or good it is, I'm still going to cover it. But to give you a good example, I don't support shitty-ass repetitive games. I didn't even buy last year's Call of Duty, period. I have not even played Call of Duty Cold War at all. That's the first Call of Duty that I have not bought before. So, there's your proof to the pudding with that one, big dog. <laughs> I straight up just got tired of Call of Duty. Like, I don't know. When, when they went to Advanced Warfare, uh, lasers, jetpacks... Then it was like they tried to bring it back around with the Call of Duty World War II game, but then it was like that was nothing like the old school Call of Duties. And then I will admit, though, the, the new Modern Warfare, the 20, what is it, 19, I think. Am I thinking of that right? The one that's got the damn uh, the uh, Battle Royale in it and all that shit. Um, that game was actually decent uh, gunplay wise. It was decent. And I think I, I think I actually did a little review on that game on my channel, but I could already see from from Call of Duty Cold War and even Call of Duty Vanguard. I'm just like, ugh, duh. I don't like the looks of it. I think they've they've definitely overplayed their hand in the whole Black Ops Cold War. You know, they're doing way too much of that that type of shit. I feel like they need to... Call of Duty really needs to get to the point where they just have like a... A game that just gets updated and developed. And you don't have like a game come out every year. You know? They just have a game that they just keep... Like Modern Warfare, right? The new one. And they just keep coming out with maps on it. Instead of making a whole new Call of Duty. Just keep coming out with maps. Keep coming out with guns. Keep coming out with new game modes and different shit to do in the game. And, and new battle royale maps or whatever the fuck they want to do, you know, that would be that seems like that would be so much more worth their time than trying to come out with, you know, a new Call of Duty every year. It just seems like that would make a lot more sense. Kind of like what it looks like Halo Infinite is going to be doing. You know, they're, they're going to come out with Halo Infinite and then really like come out with a lot more content on it over the years. Yeah, dude said in chat, you almost bought all out, but the physics looks so bad. Uh, dudes were clearing crazy shit on a 125. Well, yeah, you got to be careful of that because there was actually a glitch whenever all out first came out where you could get the 125 in first gear and literally go over 100 miles an hour in the game on a 125 in like first. There was some kind of, <laughs> you guys remember that glitch, that little bug on all out? It was insane, dude. And uh, they did actually patch that, but I, that people may still be hitting crazy shit on a 125 in that game. I don't know. I had no clue, dog. Boy, these tracks right in here, man, even the DLC for Reflex. Are you kidding me, bro? These are so fucking awesome. Like, I love how people paint me out to be this big, like, negative hater dude in this motocross gaming ship. No, that's really not what it is. It's, I've gotten so much joy from these good motocross games that it pains me so bad to play these other motocross games that don't match up to, to the good ones. That's really all it is. But like, when it comes to Reflex, shit, there ain't really anything negative to say about this game. What is there negative to say about Reflex? Seriously. For its time, are you kidding me, dog? Uh, dude said people are still hitting stupid jumps on All Out. Yeah, I'm sure they are. All Out kind of got to that point where, uh, let me hit pause real quick. All Out kind of got to that point where people figured out these certain little they came out with a with an update that really allowed you to change the setup of the bike like extremely and it really started to affect the bike a lot 
And, uh, dude, I think every single person just crashed right here on the start. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, they added that update in All Out where it really allowed you to start adjusting on the setup of the bike. And I think people have found these, like, little, certain little setup things where they can just get way more speed than was ever intended. You know what I'm saying? I think that's kind of what's happened with All Out a little bit. Whoops, let me actually look at the gameplay here. Holy shit. But yeah, just reminding you guys, I will read off any Super Chat donations that I get. And uh, any memberships, any new memberships, I will read that off as well. And you also get a lot of other benefits. Get a lot of other perks for becoming a member of the channel. We're getting these live streams going again. Just... Hey, don't sleep on the Spency Boy now, I'm telling you. Don't sleep on the Spency Boy. I know I've been in hibernation for like a year. But oh God, we're rested now, boys. Woo! -wee. I'm ready to do it like I've never done it before. Let me just say it like that. This shit will be taken to another level in 2022. Period. Like, there, there is no question about it. There is no doubt about it. I'm talking face cams, I'm talking live streams fucking damn near every day. I'm talking real life videos coming back. We got a lot of stuff, dog. A lot of stuff. I had to get everything else in my life straightened out, though. That's basically what I've been doing for the past two years. Don't let me sit here and bore you with my life story, but... It's pretty much what I've been doing for the past two years. I had to get everything else straightened out in my life and like living situation and where I was doing my YouTube shit. All that had to get straightened out before I could get to the point where I could take this shit 110 seriously. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to like do shit like that before you can get to that point. Yeah, this game was actually on Steam for like $2 the other day. I think it was right around that... that rainbow nordic fucking thing they had on steam it was literally like a dollar 99 on steam like a month ago if i somehow could have told all you boys about that i would have but i was like right in the middle i think i had already uploaded a video that day or something and uh it would have been hard for me to let you guys in on that but fuck i think i did put it in my uh discord to my general chat of my discord if you want to get in the Discord, all you got to do is DM me on Instagram at Spencer Turley, no spaces and no capital letters. Just let me know you want to get in the Discord and I will get you in there. And if you're confused at why I do that, it's because I don't just want to put a public Discord link and have 7,000 people joining my Discord. That would be impossible to uh, manage. So that's kind of the easiest way I've found to do that is just have people DM me on Instagram and then I kind of I can funnel people into my Discord a little bit slower than just putting a Discord link out there on my channel. So that's why I do that like that. But yeah. Boys, I appreciate you tuning in the stream. We seem to have fixed the freeze issue fucking finally. It's a miracle, boys. It is an absolute miracle. Moto Mika, if you're still in this bitch, you better be proud of me. You better be proud of me. All you boys, TKO, Smokey, Moto, Mika, all you, all you, all you boys. Raphael, I bet like none of you boys are in here right now, but man, they know the struggle I went through with all the, the freezing on the streams and shit. We seem to have finally fixed it though. I did quite a bit more research on it uh, and kind of figured out what, what was going on, so... But it's just like with anything in life. It's a lot of fucking trial and error, you know? It's really, like, I'm not a super smart guy. I am, but I'm not. But I know how to trial and error shit. So it doesn't really matter how smart I am on something. I can trial and error the shit till I figure it out. Big life lessons right here, boys. Big life lessons. You don't have to be the smartest guy. You just got to be the one that's willing to go through the pain to figure the shit out. You know? That's all there really is to it.
I swear to God, I could be a motivational speaker. <laughs> oh. You learn a lot of life lessons doing YouTube and shit. A lot of life lessons, man. That's the way, that's how I apply everything in my life. Listen to what I'm saying here. Whether it comes to a MX simulator setup or a live stream setting or a fucking whatever it is, it literally doesn't matter. That's how I achieve what I want to achieve is through endless trial and error and relentless dedication. And eventually, you will always get where you're trying to go. If you have those, that mentality and those attributes, you will always get where you're trying to go. Like, n nothing can stop you at that point. You know? Straight up, period, it just can't. Boy, this track's pretty fun right here. Yeah, yeah. We'll get on a different one, though. The, the next couple live streams I plan to do is going to be some multiplayer on Reflex, but I'm actually on the 360 version right now, so just be on the lookout for that. Make sure uh, you got that notification bell hit for the channel so that you get all those notifications for the live streams, but other than that, hell yeah, dog. Still Omnicross, fuck it. I still got I had all this shit unlocked on my original Reflex account, but uh, uh, back here like 2012, I, I reset my email, and so I had to like reset everything. So, um, and I think it's to the point where I have to like ride something else in the campaign of this to unlock these, like a like an ATV or something. That's why I didn't do it yet. But uh, let's pop on this bad boy. Sidecar cross. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I haven't really looked into that, uh, where you put the controller on the screen and show, like, what buttons you're hitting and shit. I haven't really looked into that yet. I don't know, like, what goes into that or whatever. Spencer boy got to eat a little bit, boys. Holy shit. Now that I've got my streams actually lasting longer than an hour, <laughs> I have to eat a little something in between. Watch me pass all these motherfuckers in like five seconds. Oh, bikes, riders. Gotta love that, that like rock hard collision to the actual rider when they're on the ground on reflex. <laughs> Woo, Smithy boy. Yo, I looked at chat. My front wheel was totally down when I looked at chat. I looked back at the gameplay. I was doing a 12 o'clock dog wide open. <laughs> Brought it back around. Uh, I think Carmichael in this game is going to have some sick-ass top speed for this kind of a track here. It may, run out of, it may run out of juice a little bit on the super long straightaways, but like this area right here is pretty much perfect for this. Whoa, Spence. Yo, did any of you guys see that Michael Lessie crash? That was pretty savage. I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> Dude's going to be what Michael Lessie crash? The 7,000 that he had in his career? Oh. <laughs> Whoa, kiss those rocks real quick. Oh, dude. 
you get going really fast on these Omnicross tracks, and it's like kind of hard to avoid people. Oh, just like that. Just like that. Yeah, Michael Lessie like came over this little tabletop. The dude in front of him was literally like 300,000 skill levels lower and came over the the uh, tabletop and was going really slow and like waved his hand. He was kind of like looking over. And then Michael Lessie kind of come over that jump and then boom, he was right there and ran into the back of him pretty fast. If you think that's Michael Lessie's fault, you're fucking crazy. That's not Michael Lessie's fault. What that is 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 it's the people running the racing's fault, first of all, for allowing those two, that two completely different of skill level riders in the, on the track at the same time, okay? That's the first problem, all right? Then the second problem is the dude that was in the front that got hit by Michael Essie. Why the hell are you slowing down in the middle of a damn motocross track? You need to treat it like you've got James Stewart behind you at all times, don't ever roll a jump. Don't ever slow down on purpose. Don't ever do any of that. You're putting yourself at risk by doing that. Period. Even Jason Anderson, when he got hit by rolling the finish line, he shouldn't have done that. He should have hit the fucking finish line. It, like, I don't know why guys get so caught up in letting off the gas on a motocross track or slowing down or waving their hand or dog. It's so dangerous. Like stop doing that. Rolling the finish line jump. Now I get it. If you like have a little mistake and then you can't jump the finish line or whatever, that's different. I'm talking about doing it on purpose. Like, you know what? I'm just going to choose not to jump the finish line just because Okay, then, you're running a risk of getting landed on, period. And it's not the dude's fault that hits you. At all. It's not Michael Lessie's fault at all that a dude just decides to slow down up on top of a tabletop where he can't even see it. That's not Michael Lessie's fault. No matter how much you hate Michael Lessie, that's not Michael Lessie's fault. <clears throat> period. Period. Just thought I'd give my little two cents on that. <clears throat> but yeah, they have a serious problem in these local races where they are um, really allowing too many different levels of skill, skilled riders in this, on the track at the same time. They, they can't be doing that. They cannot be doing that. Holy shit. Okay, let's get on something else here. How long has this stream been going? Let me look. Man, this thing's just going now, boys. Oh, man. Hour and 50 minutes it's been going. Hell yeah, dog. We got it going now. Got her going. Thank God. Thank Pastrana. Dude, we got to do a little something right here. I do a little something right, just you know, a little something right here. Yo, I like the complete separate argument you boys are getting in in chat. It's really interesting right now. I feel like I'm <laughs> like watching a whole different fucking thing here. It's like I'm over here having this discussion about something and you boys are having like 10 different other discussions in chat. Uh... Spence it, turkey. Gobble, gobble, big dog. Gobble, gobble. This turkey about to fly, boy. Watch this shit. Oh, daddies. Oh, daddies. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was far. About blacked out. Yep, okay. Whoa, Spence. 
Yeah, that's a big daddy. Whoa. Whoo-wee. Let's try to actually do a little trick action. Oh my god, I'm gonna go freestyle. Ho! Oh. Spencey boy out here doing a damn Ricky Carmichael X Games 2000, what that have been, 2008? <laughs> I think that's what he went, he did like Best Whip, uh, I just watched that on YouTube, Carmichael doing that, uh, like the high jump shit. That was interesting, watching that. So crazy that Carmichael did all that. Uh, uh. This is an interesting little area right here that I did not jump far enough at all. I missed the actual lip. Dude asking chat, what do I think about Jet Lawrence? Uh, Jet Lawrence is definitely, he's definitely figuring his shit out like very, very quickly. You know, that's what I'm most impressed about, about Jet Lawrence is he's, it's as if he's like a rookie and a vet at the same time, you know? He definitely got that kind of vibe going for him. So, but again, though, everybody has to remember, anytime you see any of these super fast young kids, like whether it's Jet Lawrence or Hayden Deegan or who the hell ever, you know, you got to remember how many guys have been just that fast or faster at that age that, that had a lot of trouble Adam Cincerullo. Okay, that's the first one that comes to mind right there. How old was Adam Cincerullo when he literally won his first Supercross race main event ever? He had to have been like 16, 17. So, Adam Cincerullo is fucking wicked when he was young. Very, very young. Um, I'm just going to have to jump right down this little... Ooh. So, I guess my point in saying that is, it's kind of like... That there's some guys that can look really good at a really young age, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee what it may seem that they're going to turn into. Do you know what I mean? Because Cincerillo had so many, so many struggles. I mean, oh my gosh. I really thought Cincerillo was done, dude. Like after, after like year four, five, six in the pro shit, I thought he was done. But... Luckily, he pulled himself out of it a little bit. Didn't get the Supercross 250 title, but he got the motocross. Um, and, you know, we'll see what he can do in the 450 class now. But, like, get this shit. So, Adam Cincerillo is almost the age. He will be the same age next year as Ricky Carmichael was when he retired. Just, just let that sink in a little bit. Adam Cincerillo has one outdoor 250 national championship. And he is literally about to be the same age that Carmichael was when he retired with 10 outdoor championships and five 450 Supergrass championships. Just kind of, you know, I think we all need to let that sink in a little bit. Carmichael was like 26 when he retired, right? I'm pretty sure. So that's pretty fucking crazy when you think about it that way. That's, that is so crazy. Even if Cincerillo went on, went absolute ham in the 450 class for the next five years straight, he still ain't going to be a Carmichael caliber, you know, when you go back and look at the history of everything, even if he won everything for the next five years, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the honest to goodness truth to that shit, dude. <clears throat> Yo, I was hitting some sick lines on this one track. Uh, I think it was this one right here. Let me see. Dude asking chat, do I like the Deegans? Yeah, I have absolutely nothing against the Deegans at all. I know some people kind of get that vibe with certain things I say in videos, but that is not... I, I have When I say I have literally nothing against the Deegans, I have literally nothing against the Deegans. At all. Um, do I really watch their shit on YouTube? No, I don't. Um, but I don't really watch a whole lot of that kind of shit anyways. Um, I don't watch a lot of these like 
uh, these vlog style motocross videos on YouTube. I watch more like Gypsy Tail, you know, that kind of stuff, interview style stuff more than I watch like, uh, you know, day in the life motocross crap. I don't watch a whole lot of that. <clears throat> oh, Spence. Ricky Carmichael was 27 when he retired, but you got to remember that last year was only a partial year. So if you're counting when Ricky was actually ra full-blown racing, it would have been 26, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, technically he retired, I guess, at 27. That would have been in 2007. Ricky did have a weird little end to his career. I'll say that for sure. You know, not doing as good as he wanted to at the Motocross Nations and losing his last Supercross race to Stewart. Oh, man. That's kind of crazy. Stewart was fucking on one that night. Holy. Carmichael still goes back and says it's like one of his most fun races he's ever had and he didn't even win. I definitely think Carmichael would have had his hands full in Supercross those next couple years if he'd have stayed. Woo! -wee. It would have been tough on him, no doubt. Let's just say I think now in Motocross, on the other hand, I think Carmichael could have waxed Stewart's ass for like another couple years. But uh, Supercross, though, ugh, I think Carmichael got out of it right in time. You know, I really do. Because then in 2007, you know, Stewart crashed out of outdoors and Carmichael could have had that title so easy. And then it went to Langston then because Carmichael chose to only run half or however many rounds of it that he did. What's up, boys? I see you in chat. I'm just kind of vibing right now. Vibing on the old Reflex, dog. Reflex is literally the most vibing motocross game that there is. Like... If you can't get a vibe on Reflex, I don't even know what the hell... I don't know what to tell you. It's like that perfect balance of not too serious, but still fun as hell. That's kind of what, what Reflex is. Raphael says he's back. How did I fix the freeze? So, I went in there and changed a little option in my encoder setup part of my recording software because that's exactly what YouTube told me was wrong was my encoder which didn't tell me a lot but luckily I seem to have changed the exact thing that I needed to change here so I changed it from making the encoder based off of my graphics card to like the built-in software of the Elgato itself so that's exactly what I did there. The issues I've had today with the stream has had nothing to do with that. The issues I've had today with the stream has been strictly based off of my internet service provider. Um, so, which that, that will not continue in the future streams. That was definitely a one-time deal. So, we got that ball rolling, dog. Yeah, if you didn't realize, Raphael, I actually, sh <laughs> I shouted you out and uh, and Moto Mika and TKO Smokey a while ago. I was like, you boys better be proud of me for fixing this shit. Yeah, man, I got some big plans to do a lot more streams on Reflex. I would love to do a lot more multiplayer streams and try to get you boys in here. Right now, I'm just on the 360, though. I, I tried to keep it pretty simple for this stream just because I knew I was going to have potentially some issues, so it was a lot easier just keeping it single-player while I'm trying to figure out my, my streaming shit. But yeah, these DLC tracks, dog, I mean... It's about as good as it could have been for Reflex, straight up. It, it really is. <clears throat> I 
I would have loved to have seen like another 10 DLC packs made by the same people that made these DLC tracks. That would have been, dude, oh man. Could you imagine like 10, like 20 more tracks on Supercross and Motocross with the the reflex stock track design style? <sighs> oh, we can only dream. That's the shit that, you know, I wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning like, fuck. Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they do that? You know, but it is what it is. Holy shit, you can jump to that. Okay. That's like a little jump landing there. Yeah, Spencer, I told you I was going to get back into uh, live streaming here, Big Doug. I told you. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I'll get it clicking again. The reason why I haven't live streamed in the past month is because I was literally waiting on a reply from YouTube uh, to tell me what was wrong with my stream. They actually like looked at it in their internal team. Shout out to YouTube. That's kind of cool that they actually went that far to fucking look at it like that, but... It still, nonetheless, it took them an entire month to get back to me. And they basically just told me it was my encoder. So, yeah. So then I went and changed a little setting on my, my encoder setting specifically. And it seems to have totally fixed the freezing an hour into the stream issue that I was having. So, yeah. We got her going now, big dogs. Why the hell am I, like, not pulling away from these guys? I feel like I keep, like, right when I about pull away, I crash. Let me try to get in front of them here a little more. Whoa. It's like I... Once you get going this fast on reflex, it starts to take a little more focus, you know? <laughs> a little more focus to keep it all together on the track. I'm pretty sure this is the one you can jump plumb down to... Till fucking Texas and back. Pretty sure. Not going to be able to do it with the ruts, but you can do it like on the first couple laps. Whoa. Oh, let's hold hands. Just hold hands real quick over the jump. <laughs> oh, me, oh my. But yeah, now that I know that the stream's not going to freeze, be on the lookout because you're going to be seeing stream after stream after stream that I'm doing. And once I can get the face cam integrated in, like everything's going to work up to face cam, green screen with the face cam. I still got to get me a actual 60 FPS face cam because I don't, I don't currently have one like that. Uh, but I did see one that I can get. All right, let's hit a different track here. I want to get on a super cross track and really run the max laps on it, get some deformation going. That's always a good time, you know what I'm saying? Wanna hit this right here. No, 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 right here. <coughs> yeah, this this track right here is another one that really has that like what I call reflexed super cross stock track scaling. This is another one that really captured this one in Fort Dodge Round 2. They really capture it. Okay, this one's got that crazy ass rhythm in the back that uh, it's all you can do to hit it all the way. <clears throat> I think I can do it on this Carmichael bike though with this little bit more top speed. I think I, I can do it here. Whoa, Spence. All right, even right here, there's a pretty big ass line you can hit if you hit all this right reflex has a lot of areas where it's like you know if you hit something just absolutely 100 percent perfectamundo you can hit it you know but if you don't 
you're not going to be able to hit it. And all it takes, like, like that right there, all it takes is just a little split in your momentum that you have. It, you're not going to be able to hit it. You know, it just takes just a little sliding out just a little or barely clipping a tough block. I need to hit the the different rhythm right there. Oh, you can just see that right there? Like you can just almost triple that from the inside, which is really hard. Let's see. I feel like I'm whipping like Carmichael was right beside Stewart when Stewart was scrubbing and whipping way the fuck harder. <laughs> uh, that was kind of comical seeing that. It's like Carmichael saw Stewart scrubbing and whipping. He was like, oh, fuck. I ain't even close to that. <laughs> but yeah, now that I know I've got the streams where it's working good, it's really going to open the doors up for me now. Because I have this problem where I get, like I was saying, I get a little discouraged when I think I can't stream because of some little issue that I can't figure out. It just basically makes me not want to stream because I'm like, well, it's just going to end an hour into it, you know. So it kind of kills my whole streaming vibe. But now that I've seemed to have fixed that, we're going to get her going. All right, let's try to actually hit this rhythm here. Okay, it's the triple there. Then you can jump all the way to the table there. Oh, daddies. That is no joke. Dude said in chat, this is my first stream of yours. Well, I appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, it's been a it's been a hectic ass year this year. Just trying to get where I even can stream. Whoo! I may make a like a real live style video explaining all that one day, but oh my gosh, talking about went through hell and back to get to here. Literally went through hell and back to get to here. I know that doesn't make any sense, but oh. Uh, if you only knew what I had to do to get back to where I even could stream, whew, you'd understand what I'm saying. But uh, nonetheless, we're here now, so better late than never. Whoa. I don't know why I'm starting to slide a little bit more. <laughs> Not exactly sure what's happening there. This track gets ruddy, though. I mean, compared to some of the other Supercrosses, this, this one gets, especially in these sand sections, like, almost gets Enduro-esque in those sand areas. Oh, oh, Spence. Yes, I do still have my IRL bikes. And yes, I do still have plans to ride those again and make videos on those. But again, it's like this process of this has to happen before that can happen, and that has to happen before this can happen, and then th that has to happen before this can happen. You know, it's kind of like that. So yes, that is on the to-do list kind of down the road here. Yeah, I still have my 2016 YZ250F that is still literally brand new. I'm talking fucking brand new still. Uh, I still have my 2004 YZ125. I still have my 2007 YZ250F. And then I still have my 2000, I think it was a 2008 CRF 230 Street and Trail. Blow out the suspension real quick. I'll squat on that real shit. <clears throat> so, yeah. Oh, you can jump. A lot of those, yeah, bro. Landing in a wheelie out here. Popping wheelie, no squilly, wet wheelie Wednesday. Woo! -wee. Boy, it's just fun, man. Gliding around on reflex. Oh, dude. You start feeling that vibe a little bit. You start gliding around these ruts. Oh, dude. 
This can get a little tricky hitting this once it gets deformed because it kind of shears off the face, the bigger part of that, that jump face on the outside. Can make that a little bit of a challenge. This, let's see, yeah, I can definitely jump to that. Like I say, there's a couple of bigger line opportunities there. Let me try to actually, oh man. Yeah, whip glitch ain't gonna help me there, boys. <laughs> gotta, gotta have the momentum on reflex. And the terrain deformation puts a kink in that. Okay, I was wanting to take this line. Of course, I fucked that up. Me, uh, I kind of think this may actually be the faster way through here because it allows you to triple, triple this, which then allows you to glide up the inside of this with some insane-ass momentum. Pretty sure that's actually the fastest way through there. What the f... I thought I had completely crashed. I looked at chat, and I looked back, and I'm back on the track. <laughs> Got the T in me going back to the back. Whoa. Gotta love those little deform kickers that give you a nice little surprise. Yeah, you can definitely jump down to that, but I don't know if it's faster. Yeah, we're definitely going to live stream MXGP 2021 when that first comes out. And boy, I ain't holding back either. <laughs> Trust me, if you want to get the real first impression of MXGP 2021, you're going to want to watch my shit. You're not going to want to watch those other bigger YouTubers. I fucking promise you, you're not going to want to do If you want an accurate opinion on it, if you want some sugar-coated... Uh, Let's all sing Kumbaya, everything's all positive, fine, and dandy, you know, neutral boy shit. If that's what you're looking for, then yeah, go watch those other guys. But, you know, if you want some real ass shit, then it's about the only place you can get it, dog. When it comes to this motocross gaming shit. Let's try to hit this inside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's see if we can sweep, triple, triple, sweep this around. Woo, that's getting tough. That's getting a little tough. That deformation really getting on the face of that. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That gave me a little bit of a little bit of PTSD from real life riding hitting a kicker right there. Woo! I've done that a couple times in real life. More than a couple times, but man, it's scary when you have those little moments like that. Okay. We're probably on like lap, I don't know, 10, 15 right now. Oh, too much brake, Spency Boy. Too much brake. Literally just pulled the whole bike around. <coughs> Whip glitch saving my life out here. Whip glitch saving my life. Oh, yep. The face of that is totally gone. Dude, I tell you what, getting in here and doing like real races on like 30 laps on these tracks, I mean, that's going to separate the men from the boys without a doubt. Been a long time since I... There's the fatty. There she is. That was the line I was trying to hit that whole time right there. That's the basically the biggest rhythm you can hit out of that. That's that right there is gonna like if I played this game every day, I would be hitting that kind of line every lap, you know. But I'm very, very chill when it comes to reflex. I used to play reflex a lot, but nowadays I'm pretty chill on it. Every once in a while, you can see that little 
damn, at one point in time, Spence did play a lot of this game. You know, you can kind of see it come out in the gameplay every once in a while. This is just fun right here, though, dude. I don't give a shit who you are. You don't even have to be a motocross fan. This is, like, just fun gameplay. Look at this scrub, dude. Oh, man. There will never be another arcade motocross game that gets as good of that, like, whip compared to scrub in the game... You know, the whip feeling different than the scrub. There will never be another arcade motocross game that gets that that dynamic specifically as good as it was in Reflex. It'll never happen again. Straight up. Whoa, dude, you can jump to that table now. Fuck. I just said I probably hit the biggest rhythm. Not when it's deformed. Now it's building up that berm. You can definitely jump. You can d jump in onto the table. That is big, Daddy. That is some big hoss ass jumping right there. That's gonna have to be like perfect corner entry. Oh. Uh, you boys are cracking me up in chat. Oh, man. And I almost think you can jump this some bitch all the way out. The Whoa. There we go. That's how you do it, boys. <laughs> if you can't jump to it, just fucking land in a willy into it. Oh, man. Those little things like that, though... Being able to do certain things on the bike like that, on reflex, that's what makes it that next level of skill gap for an arcade motocross game. You, you legitimately just can't even do shit like that in a milestone game. You just can't. You literally just can't. And if you could, it wouldn't matter anyways because there's not enough of a variation of jump skill gap for that to even matter in the first place. You know, everybody's hitting the same exact shit. It don't even matter on a milestone game. <clears throat> Reflex has that perfect, like, how easy it is to land in a wheelie, but how hard it is to land in a wheelie, you know? I think Alive got a little bit... T they got the... Uh, the wheelie physics a little bit too arcadey on a live. They made it a little bit too easy. Stoppy and wheelie physics of, oh, yeah, it's going to be tough. No matter how I try to hit it, that's going to be big tough. But, you know, everybody and their grandmother can do an infinite wheelie or stoppy on a live. And that's just not really what, what it should be in an arcade motocross game. That's, that's like too arcadey, you know? <clears throat> it's pretty sad when your first day playing an arcade game, I shit you not, the first day I played Alive, I was doing infinite wheelies and infinite stoppies. The first day playing the game. That's, that's too arcadey. That's too easy. You know, you're not going to be able to ride an infinite wheelie or infinite stoppy on reflex your first day playing it. You're just not like period. Whoa, look at it. Woo. -wee. Spency boy moving now. He moving now. Oh, man. Look at this little berm out here. Holy. Hit that pause button real quick. Tea break. Tea break. I appreciate y'all boys tuning in here. Spency boy finally got the streams going. Oh, man. All right, let's see what we got. 
I got to at least hit that jump in uh, into the table. Oh, ruts. Yep, yeah, ruts. Yeah, keep it on the track. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do, man. Just as long as you keep it on the track, you're good. <laughs> Once you get this deformation to a certain point, sometimes that's your main goal. Just keep that some bitch between them tough blocks on both sides. All right, let's see if we can do this shit. Come on, Spence. Fuck, I did it a little too tight. Got a little too excited. A little too excited. It's like you got to be able to... You gotta be able to flow around the corner at the exact same time that you turn sharp enough in the corner. There's like a fine little balance to that. Look at the rut. Oh, man. Whoa! -ee. Y'all boys are still going off in chat. <laughs> it's like this endless uh, discussion about these random ass things. Oh, man. And it's funny because like I'm not even partaking in it. <laughs> it's like you boys are just having your own little your own little discussion in chat. Oh, shit. What would I do if MX versus ATV got sim physics? Uh, ah, I don't, I don't really know about that, dude. I'm kind of getting in that where, I mean, I just don't know if they'd ever be able to do that, really. I think Poboso has done some amazing ass things when it comes to that kind of a feeling in a game. I think they've done some amazing things. Kind of like I think that I think Poboso has done that without even realizing they were doing that, right? It's what it kind of feels like to me. But you know, they were supposed to have that LCQ Studios game, which was supposed to kind of be like a sim hybrid, fucking arcade sim hybrid thing. But you know, who the hell knows when that's coming out? Probably never at this point. Probably never, but inadvertently, I think that's kind of what MX Bikes has turned into a little bit, <clears throat> and uh, it's really appealing to a mass audience, which is cool. I like that about MX Bikes. It's it's really appealing to everybody, whereas, whereas uh, MX Sim is kind of... It doesn't appeal to a lot of people. It, it really doesn't. I mean, there is a small fraction of the, the entire motocross gaming population that is actually going to get, you know, into MX Simulator like that because it, it's so fucking underground. Like, I don't know why, why MX Simulator is so underground like that, but it, MX Simulator could be a lot bigger than it is, but I don't think it's ever going to get there because... It's too underground, you know? But, uh, yeah, man. Either way, boys, that's about it for this stream. I gotta take a fat piss. And, uh, we'll be back, boys. So this one was two hour, almost two and a half hour long stream. I appreciate everybody that tuned in. I appreciate all you boys. We will be back very soon, literally tomorrow. I'll stream again tomorrow, so be sure you got all notifications turned on. We'll be back, big dogs. I appreciate every single one of you, even if you're a hater or whatever. Don't matter. I appreciate you. Later, dudes.